I'm going to run through a really quick uh, demonstration of how we um, set up um, a project in the um, Lighting Reality Outdoor module. So I'm going to go to load DXFDWG, um, I'm going to browse to a particular file and bring that file in. Um, a project file needs a certain amount of work beforehand to um, get rid of information that's um, unnecessary. Um, so I'm going to go to set area, that's going to set the extent of the calculation grid to the extent of the drawing and then I can go to select area and zoom in on the, uh, the area of interest that I want to um, calculate which is principally this road running through here. So I can close that drawing and then working from left to right I can include a project name project number, whatever it happens to be. The designer's name comes with by default, as does the date. The next dialog box allows us to go set up this grid further and um, I've got um, the number of um, grid points in the X direction as you can see as I increase the number of grid points the spacing here starts to reduce. Um, we like to see that um, one and a half meters or less, same in the Y direction So those are both less than uh, one and a half meters. Now I can go through and select a color for the grid. This is particularly useful if you're using multiple grids because you can set up different grids with different colors. And um, I'm just going to call that road. So I've set my grid up. I'm just going to turn those two things off at the top toolbar. Um, and the next thing I need to do is to go through and select a um, a column. Um, I'm going to cover the um, the Lunar dialog box in a separate um, separate tutorial. Um, in this case, I've set up a, um, a fitting in my favourites. It's something that I worked on in the roadway module and worked out a, a project for that. So um, I've selected a, a fitting, and um, I can go look at the polar curve if that's. Um, appropriate or I can look at an image of the fitting uh, but more importantly I can now go and select a luminaire here and then go and position that wherever I want to. Now all I'm doing here is using the wheel to zoom in and out and pressing the wheel down to, to pan. You can obviously use these functions up here as well to pan and to zoom um, if, if that suits you. I use cat a lot so um, I like to use the um, the wheel to do that. So I'm going to select um, a position for that column um, and as I zoom in you can see we've got the red circle which is the um, the position of the pole, the square is the um, position of the luminaire and this is a, this is a meter from the um, here. So as I move the, um, you can see here the, um, the column positions, the x and y coordinates, as I move the, uh, the positions the uh, columns move, the uh, x and y coordinates change, and also you can see that the contours are changing as well in, in real time. So the the height, the angle is the, um, the rotation of the, lan of the lantern, so I can rotate it by picking up the y square and rotating it around, or I can go type in a value to whatever I want it to be. The tilt is the vertical inclination of the lantern. With LEDs I tend to mount them horizontal these days. And um, the outreach is the dimension from the center of the column to the optical center of the lantern. So I'm mounting the lantern um, on top of the columns. There's no brackets, so it's it's only um, it's about 0.3 for this lantern from from this point here to the optical center of the lantern. Um, Dim two allows us to vary the output of the fitting. It, it may be that you uh, at some point in the evening you want to dim the lights to 50 or 75 percent of output. Um, so we can do that separately. So if I go and position another pole um, further down the road, let's say here, then all of those parameters go back to the default values. If I right click on the, on the, on the red part and then select save as default down here, then what you will find is that any further columns that you go and put in will come in with the same parameters as the, um, as the other columns. 
Now, I want to look at some really specific um, isocontour values, and I'm going to choose 5 and 1, and I'm going to turn off the other values that are there. I'm looking for an average of 5 and a minimum of 1 across the whole project, and um, I can then go and position other columns, um, or poles, can we put one in there? Does that do it? Yeah, it does. I'm going to have another column up there. So as I'm rotating the column around, what I'm actually looking at is those contours. So you can see how the blue contours are starting to cut into the road there. So, yeah, I think it works. Another column we'll put in, I think we need them up there, Let's spin that around. Another column, say there, rotate that around. I think there's some plans to extend this development through here, so this road will probably continue at a later date, and then here. So we've got um, all of our columns, I think I might actually put that one there, that seems to work a bit better. Um, we've got all of our columns set up there, and um, we've got the results of our, our quality figures. Um, we've got points all over the area here, which are, uh, have got results, and um, in those areas, we, what we need to do is exclude points that are beyond the area of interest. Now, some of you will use um, lighting software where you can actually draw the grids around the road or whatever it happens to be. We use rectangular grids um, and then we exclude the areas and we do that using masking. So, there's two ways we can do masking. We can either blank out an area and then uh, to exclude the areas that we, that we want like so, so that's the, um, the rectangle, the circle or the polyline tool or we can blank the whole area out here and then we can cut out the area that's of interest that we want to include. This is my preferred um, way of doing things um, and um, what I tend to do is I'll go put a really quick contour um, polyline around the edge of the area something like that we can then pick up by if we left click we can pick up points and then carry on So if I right click on that point I can just pick it up and move it. Then we can just go through and tidy that up, which I would I would normally do, I'm not going to do it in this case, because um, so we're looking for an average of 5 and a minimum of 1, we've got an average of um, 6.55 and a minimum of 1.2. We have some opportunity to maybe go play around with that design still further, maybe reduce the lumen package. Um, I'm going to hide the masking here and uh, that gets rid of this blue background and then we can see where the contours are going. But what I can also do is um, go through and look at maybe other lumen packages to see if we could um, reduce the lumen package to, um, to get closer to the um, quality figures we're aiming for. Um, so we're taking that down to 4,000 lumens rather than the 4.6 we were originally using. So we've, we've made some savings. Uniformity is not brilliant at 18%, probably could do better if I, um, if I tried a little bit harder. Maybe not. So that's how we go through and set up um, a really quick project.